made an assumption there too when you talked about how um, the people in prison, you said, I talked to these people in prison who are doing all these things and then they would go out, let's just say the worst kinds of sins. It doesn't really matter. We know that Christians can and do sin from the Bible and reality, right? We know that they continue to sin um, even after being saved. So just because there's sins that are greater, you know what I mean, that we can that we subjectively consider greater, um, then I think, um, oh, hold on one second. Um, just because there's sins that we, consider to be greater from our earthly perspective uh, before god one sin is all it takes is to ruin the perfection right but one you sin the last part no though john the, the the last part okay, go ahead. of one guy in particular who was at church said he believed oh converted to islam converted sure. islam was he saved yeah. Yeah. no but, yeah. but, but so is it possible for a christian well hebrews think about hebrews the whole book of hebrews what is it these people were saved they're thinking about going back to the law they're trying mm -hmm. to go to bulls and goats and, and so that's the whole entire context there. So you can have a genuine believer who decides to leave and go to another faith, right? Are you, are you serious? So you can have a genuine believer who decides to leave and go to another faith, right? What? So you can have a genuine believer who decides to leave and go to another faith, right? No, 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 no. So you can have a genuine believer who decides to leave and go to another faith. Right? But don't be ridiculous. <laughs> so you can have a genuine believer who decides to leave and go to another faith, right? Oh Lord Jesus! No. <laughs> Why? Why? Are you are you serious? But don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Let's play this little game. We're gonna close out with this. Okay, I'm gonna play this little game. The game is called "Who Said This." I'm gonna put up a quote, and then I want you to tell me, "Don't cheat." Don't look up the name or anything like that. I want you to tell me if you are familiar with this quote and who said it, then put it in the comments when I when I put the the uh, the statement up. Y'all ready? Here we go. A believer may utterly forsake Christ. Remember remember what 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 you mean said? Remember what he said in the clip? A believer may utterly forsake Christ and come to the point of not believing. God has guaranteed that he would not disown those who thus abandon the faith. Who said that? Who said that? Answer? Charles Ryrie. So great salvation. Again, there's the page number. Another one. Those who have once believed are secure forever, even if they turn away. Again, this is the reason why I'm sharing these quotes is because this is nothing new. So when I heard, when I heard our brother, what do you mean, say this, and to be sincere about it, he's sincerely wrong. But this is the mentality and attitude that he has because this, th these are the people that he probably um, follow, anti-lordship. These are what you would call anti-lordship advocates. Who said it? You guessed it, Charles Ryrie. Another one. And this quote is a doozy. Quote, nothing guarantees that a true Christian will love God. Salvation does not necessarily even place the sinner in a right relationship of harmonious fellowship with God. I'm just gonna let y'all read that, and now and I'll look at the comments. <laughs> Do y'all see this? This person said, "Nothing guarantees that a true Christian will love God. Nothing guarantees that a true Christian will love God. Nothing. Not even the Word of God. Nothing guarantees that a true Christian will love God." Salvation does not necessarily even place the sinner in a right relationship of harmonious fellowship with God. Who said that? Here's who it is. Zane Hodges. Zane Hodges from his book, Absolutely Free. And there are, and there are the page numbers. So... The reason why I said I'm not surprised that what do you mean 
would make these kinds of comments is because look who else makes these kinds of statements regarding salvation, regarding lordship, regarding submission to Christ, regarding repentance. And the fact that they can put it in a book and then not get any kind of pushback. I say all of that to say this. When we think about salvation, I hope and pray that when, when you and I understand what God did, what he through his son by the power of the Holy Spirit did, he did it not because of what you and I did, because we did nothing but the, but but be recipients of his wrath. That's it. So when, when we talk about salvation, when we talk about regeneration, when we talk about being born again, and we don't have the understanding of what the scriptures teach, number one, we shouldn't be teaching anything. We, need, we should be sitting down and being quiet and being taught and humbling ourselves because we don't know. For, for my brother, what do you mean? To make those statements that you've made. That a person can be saved and abandon the faith and yet still be saved? That is not what the Apostle John said. He said in 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, that they went out from us because they were not of us. For if they had remained with us, they, for if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out from us that it may be known or may be evident that they were really not of us. What does that say about the keeping power of God? What does that say about the sanctifying work of the spirit? What does that say about the blood of Christ? It says that the, that the Trinity cannot keep one person who claimed to have been saved and have decided now that they're going to leave the faith. If God can change hearts, if he can change the heart of man, and make a heart of man respond and act like an animal, like he did Nebuchadnezzar for seven years. He can change a sinner's heart to cause and make them follow his decrees and statutes for a lifetime until he returns. At the end of the day, you and I have nothing to boast about our salvation, claiming that we had something to do with it. We had nothing to do with it. We were dead. We were separated from God. We were estranged from God. It was God in his mercy and in his sovereignty and in his grace, his patience, his long suffering, his kindness, who caused us to be born again. We give him all the glory because God is the one who did it. God did. And since he's the one who did it, he deserves all the glory and therefore all the glory should go totally to him. And that's the Taru Root.